Thank you for joining us as we present another spirit-filled message by RCCG ICC UK, the home of kings and priests. Please grab your Bible, notepad and your pen as you're about to listen to this transformational message. God bless you. Our Father and our God, we thank you and we bless you for a day like this that we can gather together. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness that never fails. Father of the fatherless, husband of the widow, defender of the defenseless, the one who intercedes for those who cannot speak for themselves. We have come to honor you this morning. We thank you for the liberty. Thank you for the freedom. Thank you for the joy that you place in our hearts. Lord, we are grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Um, every time that we gather together, you know, the word of God teaches us something. He says to us through his word that we must never forget those who are going through difficulties and affliction. And we're told in the book of Proverbs chapter 31, verse 8 and 9. Can we have that on the screen, please? Just, just watch. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, um, can I have my translation, please? Yeah. Hallelujah. It says, What? Open your mouth for the dumb. Those dumb here means those who are unable to speak for themselves. For the rights of all who are left desolate and what? Defenseless. And it says, Open your mouth, judge righteously, and administer justice for the poor and the needy hallelujah amen. amen this is a call this is a demand that heaven puts up for us we're told in the book of romans chapter 8 that the holy spirit makes intercession for us with groans that even we cannot utter the bible says that jesus christ is seated at the right hand of the father making intercession for us hallelujah amen. and so the let, let me say this the purpose let, let me say it in a better way okay turn with me very quickly to second second corinthians please second corinthians chapter one second corinthians chapter one i read from verse three Hallelujah. From verse 3. Could you put from verse 3, please? It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of what? Sympathy, pity, and mercy. And the God who is the source of every comfort, consolation, and encouragement. Next line. It says, Who comforts and consoles and encourages us in every trouble, calamity, and affliction so that we may also be able to comfort console and encourage those who are in any kind of trouble or distress with what the comfort consolation and encouragement which with which we ourselves and our are comforted consoled and encouraged by god hallelujah what, what the word of god is saying here is that for everything that you have ever received from god it is not for you it is so that you can use it to also minister grace to another thank you lord uh, let, let me tell you something i i thought about it's not written in the bible but i thought about it i have a sense in my spirit that the man who was called the good samaritan that he had been in difficult places in him in his own life and so he could understand what it meant to me to see another person who was bruised afflicted and so because of what he had seen i don't know but whatever he must have experienced in his own life he understood that i cannot move on as if nothing is happening i cannot just ignore this person because i have been there before 
And the Lord said to the children of Israel, he said to them, when you see the category of swamp, okay, uh, what, what does swamp stand for? Folks, what does it stand for? Swamp. Okay, we must know it by fire by force in this house. Okay, swamp is an acronym. An acronym is a short form of holding things together. It means a stranger. Remember, write it down. As I'm saying it, write it down. Because I'll ask you again next week and we shall, I'll keep on asking you. Okay, swamp. Write it down. Okay, strangers. What? Widows. What? Orphans. The needy and the poor. Okay, I repeat again. Strangers widows what orphans the needy and the poor those categories of people are people that god has special concern for and the lord said when you see the stranger or the foreigner in your land the lord said to the children of israel be careful not to maltreat them why because you too you have been strangers in a foreign land and the bible says god commanded them to look after them God commanded them to be cared for. Are we together? So that whatever we have experienced in our own distress. Let me ask a question if you're here this, this, this morning. How many of you have ever been in a, in a place of distress where things have been challenging? Who has ever been there? Right. Has, has God ever comforted you? Has God ever encouraged you? Has God ever lifted you up? Has God ever sent you comfort in the midst of your challenges? Has he delivered? Has he rescued you? Right. Now, when God did all those things, it was not meant to end at you. Are we together? It was meant to be that through you, whatever you experience in you, it was meant to also flow onto others. So that you are not a dead end. Tell your neighbor, I'm not a dead end of God's grace. I'm not a lake. I'm not a pond. I'm not a pond. I am a flowing river. Flowing Hallelujah. River. That means that whatever you have experienced in your life, it is meant to flow from you, flow into you, through you, and into the lives of others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if, if you have ever experienced the comfort of God, I want you to stand upon your feet this morning. Hallelujah. And I want you to lift up your hands to God. Why? Because there are a people somewhere right now, people all over the globe, all over the world, all over the world all over the globe right now and the lord said I'm, i looked for a man who would stand in the gap hallelujah amen who would stand in the gap and i wonder if there is one man in this place i wonder if there's one person in this place who has a compassionate nature of god a person who has experienced the mercy of god the love of god in their heart and be able to say lord father in the name of jesus i stand not now watch this when you stand you don't just stand you can say i stand for a thousand the bible says one shall chase what a thousand and two what ten thousand so that even if one person has experienced comfort father in the name of jesus through me may a thousand may two of us chase ten thousand may two of us stand in the gap hallelujah for ten thousand in the name of jesus if there's somebody next to you i want you whether you want to hold hands or you want to face an agreement i say together in the name of we stand right now for two thousand ten thousand lord god this morning lord we stand in the gap for thousands right now in ukraine right now father in the name of jesus we lift up ukraine as a nation before you oh god a people who are experiencing pain discomfort right now lord the cruelty that they're going through father in the name of jesus we lift up our voice right now with the comfort that we have experienced in our own lives oh god father we lift them up before your throne of grace we stand in the gap for thousands we stand in the gap for millions this morning oh god and we ask that your mercy and your grace oh god will rise up this morning hallelujah we stand here tonight i mean this this morning oh god lord you said that when the enemy comes in like a flood you will raise up a standard you will raise up a barrier father this morning in the name of jesus we keep not silent hallelujah we lift up our voices up to heaven and we cry out to you heavenly father lord that your mercy your mercy your grace your loving kindness oh god will come down like rain this morning hallelujah lord that you will comfort strengthen uphold oh god 
Lord, the people of Ukraine, Lord, who are going through incredible challenges right now, homes decimated, Lord God, people's houses, people's livelihoods, people's families torn down to shreds because of the decision of one man. Father, in the name of Jesus, arise, O oh God, from your resting place. Hallelujah. Arise from your resting place. Arise from your resting place. Hallelujah. Arise from your resting place. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare that you are God and not a man. Hallelujah. And so we speak, O oh God, Lord, over that nation right now. Be a shield. Be a strong tower. Be a fortress, O oh God, over that nation. Lord Church of God, raise up your voice. The Bible says that I heard their voices. Hallelujah. Lord, this morning we will not be silent. We raise our voices. We raise our hearts to you. We raise our hands to you, O oh God. And we say, let the war cease, O oh God. Let the war cease, O oh God. Lord, let the war cease. Let the war cease. We say stop in the name of Jesus. I say stop in the name of Jesus. We cease. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. certain things clear to me and it was from certain things my dad used to say to us when we were younger my dad would say to you you are not rich if your brethren are poor the proof of your wealth 
is the impact it has on your brethren because if you're the only one who is rich and all your brethren are poor then you're a wicked person and the Holy Spirit used that to teach me something that my peace is not for me if my peace does not bring about peace for others then that peace is nonsense if my joy does not bring joy for others then how wicked it is so the value of my peace the value of my liberty is that it will bring liberty and peace for others of what joy is it when you have peace you have liberty you have freedom you have everything and all those around you are in bondage let me tell you something according to the word of God in Genesis chapter 1 the Bible says that they that the God created the heavens and the earth and the Holy Spirit was brooding over the earth the word to brood Genesis chapter 1 put it on the screen okay give me verse 2 okay the Bible says that the Holy Spirit it says the earth was without form and an empty ways and darkness upon the face of the very great deep the Spirit of God was moving hovering brooding over the face of the waters okay watch this the reason why the Holy Spirit was the word brood is a form of expression of discomfort pondering thinking not too happy about something it is it is that there is something that is disturbing you now hear this do you know the reason why god said the next thing he said what was the next word he said in verse three what does it say hello it says and god said what let there be light and was light you know why because hear this god could not be light and he would be accepting darkness in the in the things he has created around him god could not be in the place of abundance and he will accept and to, so the holy spirit was disturbed because this is not bible says when you pray pray like it says thy will be done on earth as where it is in heaven so god was surrounded by his light are you listening god was surrounded by abundance God was surrounded with purpose because he himself is light. He himself is purpose. He himself is abundance. So he could not tolerate it on the earth. And so the Holy Spirit was disturbed by it. Because everything that was on the earth was contrary to what God is and contrary to his own environment. And so he decided we have to change it. You cannot be in light and be comfortable with others' darkness. You cannot be in a place of abundance and be happy with the poverty of others. Otherwise, I suspect you come from certain countries. Your poverty is revealed by what you can enjoy and accept around you. When we're at university, we were taught that poverty is not what is around you. It is a mentality and a spirit. So when you can accept the darkness of others, when you can accept and tolerate and it's okay with you, it shows that the problem is not around you, the problem is inside you. And that is why when you have walked in the light of God, when you have experienced the liberty of Christ, when you have experienced the wholeness of God, the joy of the Holy Ghost, it will give you sorrow on the inside when you see another person in pain. That's why the good Samaritan, he crossed, watch this, the Bible says he crossed from where he was to the person who was afflicted. Because you know what, he, he knew what it meant to be happy. He knew what it meant to be healed. He knew what it meant to be in, in a place of liberty. I cannot tolerate the pain of others because I have known the peace and the joy of the Holy Ghost. I cannot sit back and be comfortable with the destruction of others when I when it is well with me and so for the last time I'm gonna say father with the peace that I have experienced 
with the joy that I have experienced or with the comfort I have experienced Lord I release it now to the people of Ukraine I release it now I'm using Ukraine even as a point of contact for all those around us all the nations around us Father in the name of Jesus with what we have experienced Lord God with a joy with a comfort, with a strength, hallelujah, Lord, that we have experienced in our own life. Lord, we release that, oh God, to the people of Ukraine. And we use them, oh God, as a point of comfort and contact to all those around us, all those around us, all the nations around us, oh God. Father, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, what you care about reveals who is inside of you. Write it down. What you care about reveals who is on the inside of you. When God dwells on the inside of you, your heart begins to care about the things that God cares about. I discovered during the week a revelation about idolatry. The word idolatry comes from I. If only thing you care about is yourself, then you're an idol worshiper. I repeat, if the only thing you care about is I, you yourself, you're just an idol worshiper. You're not a worshiper of God. Because when you truly worship God, the things that matter to God will begin to matter to you. The Bible says the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. All peoples, nations, tribes and tongues. It doesn't matter where they come from. It doesn't matter whether black, white or green. Humphrey, make sure the door is shut. Humphrey, shut the doors over there because of sound, yeah? Don't want to disturb the neighbors. Make sure both doors are shut. All the doors are shut. Always make sure they're shut, always. If you're an idol worshiper, all you care is about me, myself, and I. When you're a true worshipper of God, the things that are burdens for God, the peoples of the earth, the nations become the burdens of your heart. Other people's circumstances. Father, in the name of Jesus, deliver us from idolatry. We reject it as a house. We reject it as a people. Lord, give us your heart. Your heart. The heart that beats for the sake of others and not just ourselves. Take away selfishness and give us a heart of love and compassion. Father, this is our prayer. Thank you. Um, I thank God for all of us who are here um, this morning and I particularly thank God for those who April is their birthday amen um, <clears throat> April is my mother's birthday and um, I thank God for that because if she was never here I would never be here amen so I always remember two people in my household um, my first brother and my mother uh, April then my immediate older brother and my father are August you know um, and then my brother one of my brothers my younger brother and my sister are October I'm the only one who is in March um, so my mom said is because you're special I said thank you <laughs> hallelujah okay um, once again I want to welcome all those who are here with us for the first time um, it will be your first time here, but it will not be your last time here. Amen. 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 Praise God. Um, as a house, I'm sure the one thing that you know is that we're people who 
um, are unapologetic about our passion for God. Amen. Um, I used to think that you have to be careful, but I am no longer careful. Also, when time is running out on you, okay, and I hope that you also know that the time is running out for you, because every birthday means that you just have another year less to accomplish what God has called you to. Amen. Um, I was out at the um, <clears throat> Draper's Academy um, today. How many of us know Draper's Academy? Is there any child here who is at Draper's? Any child who's... No, nobody here. Um, amazing school. Wow. I, I walked in there today and I was like, this is phenomenal. You know, and, and when I looked at it, it told me something that whoever was behind the concept of this school, <clears throat> that person had seen something. You know, I've never been to a school like that before. It's got the, the, the nursery part of it. It's got the, um, it's just in Harold Hill, just here. It's got the primary, it's got the secondary. It was actually opened about 10 years ago by the Queen. You know, phenomenal school. Uh, absolutely amazing. I've never seen a school like that. Probably the, the, the closest school I've seen to that was probably the school I went to in terms of my secondary school. No, it's true. I, I went to one of the best schools in the world. You know, you can tell, can't you? <laughs> <clears throat> Let me tell you, uh, I can stand here and say that I went to one of the best schools in the world. I, I can say that. If you doubt that, let's sit down together and let's reason. Amen. Um, no, it's true. Because it's you, the kind of school you go to can change you. It can make you what you are. It's true. So I, I wasn't born like this. I give credit to the schools and the teachers I've had in my life. You know, And of course my parents and ultimately Jehovah God. Um, but it was a phenomenal school. You know, And one thing that was clear to me was that this school was built with purpose and vision. <laughs> Sorry, darling. Yeah. <clears throat> when I walked into that school, what I saw was not buildings, was not rooms, buildings and everything. No. I saw purpose and I saw vision. And it was clear to me that nobody can go through this school and end up being a non-entity. No, really. If you, if you, we're all going to be there on the 17th. So when you get there, you will know what Pastor is talking about. You know, you cannot walk into that school. There's no way you can go through that school and you come out a non entity. I'm telling you. Because you're surrounded with vision, you're surrounded with purpose, you're surrounded with, with, with aspiration. Just being in there would inspire you to greatness. You will not be able to tolerate mediocrity anymore in your life. You know. Because the, the cocoon in which you are fashioned can, can determine what is acceptable to you. You know, the Bible says something that the Lord warned, okay, chapter 25 and verse 40. Okay. Um, of, of Exodus, Exodus 25 verse 40, okay, make sure that you check it, make sure you look at it, I taught, I, I emphasized something last week, okay, um, can somebody put on the screen for me what I taught you guys on Friday night, okay, I sent it out as a text, okay, I'm probably going to do that every time I come up here, okay, um, there was a text I sent out um, during the week and I went through it on on, on, on Friday night, okay? Could you put it on the screen, okay? Don't forget, I, I said it's, it's, the, it's speaking out of the voice or, or God said. If somebody says God said, knowing the voice, okay? All right? <clears throat> um, it says, you know, so Dami, could you just adjust it, yeah? All right, okay? Hallelujah. It, 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 let, me, let me read it to you. It says, it, it, somebody says, I heard a voice. Okay. All right. Now, let me say, you're hearing my voice right now. Okay. But 
what should cause this voice to be honored in your heart is that it is consistent with God's word. Are we together? We learned that there are how many voices on earth? Thank you. No, don't. Okay, thank you. How many voices? Is it a guesswork? Okay. So, Coco, how many voices? Oh, how many voices? So, how many? Four. Okay, what are the voices? Okay, there, there's first of all, there's your voice. Okay, are you listening? Okay, One, these are the four voices that, that, you would, that you would get to hear. Okay, all right, generally. And then I'll tell you what the, the, the other one is. There's your voice. Okay, there is the voice of men, people. Okay, there is the voice of the world. Okay, that speaks out there. Then there's a voice of Satan. But there is one voice that is separate from all of them, which is what? The voice of God. Okay? So there are four voices that we are all familiar with, are common to us. Okay? All right? And then there is one which a man has to learn and has to develop a relationship with which is the voice of God. So on the on the left on the right hand you have the voice of God and on the left hand side you have the four voices which is your voice. Okay? Your voice can speak to you. Are we together? Okay? Then you have the voice of people around you. Then you have the voice of the world system. The world system has a voice. Okay? There's a voice of the world, okay? And then there's a th last voice, which is the voice of Satan, okay, that speaks directly. But he speaks through these four voices. So Satan can speak into a man's mind, okay? Satan can speak through men. Satan speaks through the world system, okay? And also, of course, he speaks directly to people, okay? The Bible tells us all this. But there is one voice that you and I, that would deliver you from those four voices, okay? Only one voice can deliver you from those four voices. All those voices, four, those four voices can be damaging and destructive to your life. Are we together? Yeah? But one voice, which is the voice of God, is the voice of victory, the voice of deliverance, the voice of life. And it is important that you and I must master and know this voice of God. So that irrespective of what is being said, who is saying, you must be able to discern which voice. Okay? Now, the relationship you have with a person will determine how well you will know their voice. So there are people who, I don't, let me tell you, there are people who I know when they call, I'm not asking, hello, who is this? Okay? I don't need to ask them. Because I know them and I know their voice. Okay? If you don't know somebody, you cannot know their voice. If you don't have a relationship with a person, then your voice will not... Even, there are even times when people try and disguise their voice. Nicole's dad, every time he calls me or I speak with him, he, he tries to play tricks on me by disguising himself. But he can't because I know him. So no matter how he disguises his voice, I can tell. I say, Papa, that's you. You know, sometimes we, we mess about until um, we, we catch up each other and so on. Okay? Um, and, and so it is important that you must know the voice that is speaking. Okay? And irrespective of what platform, what did um, Isaac say to Esau? No, sorry. Yeah, say to, let me go back. What did Isaac say to Jacob when he came to him for the blessing? Pardon? Yeah. He said to him, hmm, this is the voice of what? But I can, pardon? What all he was feeling, okay, all right? So he was presenting himself as who? Esau, Okay. But the voice that was speaking was what? Jacob. Okay. Even though Esau, I mean Jacob came to him with what? 
the skin of what? An animal, okay? Boy, that guy must have been very hairy, isn't it? Yeah, all right? Um, for, for them to think that. <laughs> okay, so uh, he, he could, then he said, come near, come near. He could smell him because he had smeared himself with the scent, isn't it? All right? Um, but the voice that was speaking was, and so because he went with what he was feeling, he misunderstood and mistook the voice. Are we together? Okay, so he says, so Jacob went near to Isaac and his father and felt him and said, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. Okay, and I, I want to say this, okay. It is vital that you understand the voices around you. The nature of the voice, the character of the voice, because behind every voice is a spirit. Are you listening? Yeah? Behind every voice is a spirit. And behind every spirit is a purpose and intention. Behind every voice is a spirit. And every spirit has an intention. Okay? Now, how many of us remember the story of Ahab and the how many prophets? He had 400 prophets around him, isn't it? All right? Okay, he had so many prophets around him. Okay? And the Bible says that there was one he hated. Who was the one he hated? Pardon? Did you hear from Pastor T? See, that's why it's good to sit near men of God. You, you had the correct answer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay? So he, had, he was surrounded by all sorts of prophets. He had 200 prophets who would tell him all sorts of things around him. Okay? And the word of God says that when Jehoshaphat came to him, okay, please listen. The Bible says that he surrounded himself with all the prophets. And all those prophets, when, when he went to go to war, what did the prophets around him tell him? He, they told him, go, 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 you will succeed. Ah, God is with you. Yeah? Pardon? That, aha, auntie, you are in the spirit. <laughs> okay, just like um, King Putin has surrounded himself with all sorts of prophets who, who told him, go, 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 you will have victory, isn't it? Go, you will have victory. The world is, will be with you. The Lord is with you. Okay, when you arrive there, the people welcome you with open arms. And that was the lie that they told him. Okay. And then the Bible says that God said, okay, watch this, okay, God said up in heaven that there is, he said, ah, we need to go and deceive Ahab. Who will go for him? Who will go for, for us? And the Bible says that, <laughs> careful, the Bible says that one lying spirit came up and said, I will go. And I will enter the mouth of the prophets. Uh, and I would deceive. Shall, shall we go through it? Okay. Okay, let's, let's read together. Yeah. Then Ahab, king of Israel, gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said to them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I hold back? And they said, Go up, for the Lord will deliver it into, your, into the hand of the king. Next line. Okay. Jehoshaphat said, Is there not another prophet of the Lord here whom we may ask? Next line. Okay, Ahab king of Israel said to, said to, okay, praise God. Who will read for me? Daisy. Yeah, where's Daisy? Uh, read for me, thank you. Give her a microphone, okay, um, while we unfreeze. Okay, so Ahab said, okay, 1 Kings 22 from verse 8, all right. Uh, Darling, use your use your use your use your personal Bible. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I have to keep on putting on, putting off, putting on, putting off. Okay. All right. Are we together? First Kings, chapter eight. Sorry, 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 8, yeah? Yeah, go on. Uh, 
All right, let, 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 me, let me read on while, while we're waiting, okay? It says, Ahab king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, son of Imla, whom by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I what? I hate him, for he never prophesies good for me, but, but evil. Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say that, you know. Then Ahab king of Israel told an officer, Bring quickly Micaiah, son of Imla. And now the king of Israel, as Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, were sitting in royal robes, each on his throne, in an open place. Okay? Then the Bible says that um, each on his throne, in an open place, on a threshing floor, at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before him. And Zedekiah, son of Shenai, okay, um, made him horns of iron and said, Thus says the Lord, with these you shall push the Syrians until they are destroyed. And all the prophets agreed, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord will deliver into the king's hand. The messenger who went to call Micaiah said to him, Behold, now the prophets unanimously declare good to the king. Let your answer, I pray you, be like theirs, and say what is good. Okay? Well, that is what you call duress or manipulation. But Micaiah said, as the Lord lives, I will speak what the Lord says to me. So he came to the king, that's King Ahab, and said to Micaiah, Shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we hold back? And he answered, Go and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the hands of the king. Yeah? And the king said to him, How many times must I charge you to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Okay? Now, let me ask a question. How do you think that that verse 15 was said? Okay, let me ask, let me ask, okay. So Stella, ask me if you should go and buy McDonald's. Go now. Go. Go, go. Eh? Eh? Is it junk food? You want to eat McDonald's? Go, 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 go. The Lord bless you as you eat McDonald's right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what am I saying to you? Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Now, Ahab was told go, but he knew from the way it was said. Eh? It was, go. You want to go? Go now. Yeah? When you come back, you meet me. Isn't it? Now, a child who doesn't understand anything will say, ah, praise God. This is I should go. Then, Mommy, can I have some money now? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And in, 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 in that sense, anybody who is around, any adult who is around will say, look, eh, they are telling you for your own good, don't go. Are we together? Okay? And even in English language, you know how something is said, the same thing can be said, but how it is said will, will change the meaning of it. Okay? All right? So it's important. Okay? So the Bible says that Ahab, when he heard it, he knew this guy is what mocking me. Okay, then he now said, no, tell me what the truth really is. What exactly is it that you're saying? And the king said to him, how many times must I charge you to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. Then the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, did I not tell you that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil. And Micaiah said, Hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab to go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? One said this way, another said that way. Then there came forth a spirit of whom I am about to tell. And stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. The Lord said to him, by what means? And he said, I will go forth and be a lion spirit 
in the mouth of all his prophets. The Lord said, you shall entice him and succeed also. Then he says, go forth and do it. So the Lord put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets and the Lord and the Lord has spoken evil concerning you. But Zedekiah son of Cheniah went near and struck Micaiah on the cheek and said, Which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak to you? Micaiah said, Behold, you shall see on that day when you go into an inner chamber to hide yourself. And Ahab king of Israel said, Take him, that is Micaiah, carry him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, and Joash the king's son, and say, The king says, Put this fellow in prison and feed him with bread, that is bread of affliction and water of affliction, until I come in peace. Micaiah said to him, If you return at all in peace, the Lord has not spoken by me. He added, Hear, O people, every one of you, so Ahab, king of Israel, and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and enter the battle. He says, but you put on your royal clothing. And the king of Israel disguised himself and went into battle. But the king of Syria had commanded the 32 captains of his chariots, fight neither with small nor great, but only Ahab, king of Israel. And when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, they said, Surely it is the king of Israel. They turned to fight against him. But Jehoshaphat cried out. And when the captains of the chariots saw that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back from pursuing him. Verse 34, note this, very crucial. He says, But a certain man drew a bow at what venture or at random and smote Ahab the king of Israel between the joints of the armor. So he said to the driver of his chariot, turn around and carry me out of the army for I am wounded. The battle increased that day and Ahab the king was propped up in his chariot facing the Syrians and at nightfall he died and the blood of his wound flowed onto the floor of the chariot and there went a cry throughout the army about sundown saying every man to his city and his own country for the king is dead and Ahab was brought to Samaria where they buried him and they washed his chariot by the pool of Samaria where the harlots bathed and the dogs licked up his blood as the Lord had prophesied note that statement the rest of Ahab's acts and all he did the ivory palace and all the cities he built are they not written in the book of the chariots i mean chronicles of the kings of israel so ahab slept with his fathers ahaziah his son reigned in his stead hallelujah let me say this and probably write it down yeah the voice that you follow will determine your future and your destiny Your life, your life. Uncle Femi, make sure you write. Don't let your wife write for you. Find your pen and write for yourself. Praise God. In fact, if anybody should be writing, it should be the head of the home. that should be writing more than the others. Because when you get home, I expect you to teach your family what, what you're hearing. Your destiny is determined by the voice that you listen to. Your destiny, I repeat, is determined by the voice that you listen to. The Bible says that in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Okay? Everything on earth is what it is by virtue of a voice the Bible says and God said this happened and God said this happened and God said this happened yeah everything that we see that is manifesting is a function of something somebody said when you go for an interview how do you get the job by what you what say when you don't get it they will tell you it's because of what you didn't say or what you said. Am I making sense? Yeah. Your, let me tell you the truth. Your home can scatter 
by what you say or what you don't say. Almost every quarrel, every conflict in a home is determined by what somebody said or didn't say. What you say, the Bible says the power of what? Life and death is where? In the tongue. And what's your name again? Taiwo. You must be, have a kind day somewhere. Uh -huh, okay, all right. So Taiwo. You see, let me tell you the truth. Every quarrel in my house is because of what I said or what she said. Or how she said it or how I didn't say it. Am I making sense? Yeah. Is that true for you too, in your house? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. The, the measure of your perfection, the Bible says in the book of James, is determined by what comes out of your mouth. Are we together? So that the voice, the words that proceed from our mouth, the voices that are operating in our lives, can either lead you to life or can lead you to death. Who you listen to, the voices that you surround yourself with, are critical to your destiny. Many times the voices that are needful for our life are not the voices, are not the people that we like. Is that true? And so the Bible says here that Ahab, when he wanted to do something, okay, the Bible says that he asked his 400 people around him. And I ask you today, Check the people who are close to you, around you. Ask yourself, how many of them have the voice of God speaking through them? One of the marks of the last days, according to Timothy, is that in the last days, people will surround themselves with people who will tell them what they want to hear. There is an element of what you want to hear and what you what need to hear. What you want to hear will destroy you. Write it down. What you need to hear is what will save you. Second Timothy Second Timothy chapter four, I read from verse one. Okay. It says, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus. Who is the judge? Who is to judge the living and the dead? And by and in the light of his coming and his kingdom. Herald and preach the word. Keep your sense of urgency. Stand by. Be at hand and ready. Whether the opportunity seems to be favorable or unfavorable. Whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Whether it is welcome or unwelcome, you as a preacher of the word are to show people in what way their lives are wrong and convince them, rebuking and correcting, warning and urging and encouraging them, being unflagging and inexhaustible in patience and teaching. Verse 3 says, For the time is coming when people will not tolerate endure sound and wholesome instruction. But having ears itching for something pleasing and gratifying, they will gather to themselves one teacher after another to a considerable number chosen to satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors they hold. This is Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4. What was the previous passage we read from? Ahab, where, what, where was it? 1 Kings 22. What has changed between then and now? What is happening in Russia right now? 
So the Bible says Jesus Christ is the same when? Yesterday, today, and forever. There is nothing new under the sun. Listen, go and check. Whenever somebody's life, especially young people, eh? whenever you see a, a, a young person's life begin to go south, go and check. There are voices in their life. Every human being is spirit, soul, and body. Are you with me? The human spirit was designed to be navigated through voices. So the voices that are dominant in your spirit will become your sat navigator for life. Are you listening? So whatever voice, are you <laughs> listening? You see, watch this. In a home, when everything is fine, or in, or you're in a relationship, everything is fine. All of a sudden, somebody begins to change. All of a sudden, you see that they're, they're no longer that they used to be and everything. Go and check. There is a voice speaking from somewhere. There is always a voice behind every conduct, every action, every behavior. By your behavior, we can tell which voices are dominant in your life. We can tell whether it is the voice of God that is at work in you. Or whether it is the voice of the world or the of satan or the systems or people because all voices produce manifest action quincy are we together are you taking notes that is why if you want to listen any environment you want to control, the first thing you must control are the voices. Do you know that is a truth till today? Why do you think, okay, that all despotic governments, on autocratic governments, when they want to control the atmosphere in which they in, they control the measure of information that goes in, social media, all those things, they go for blackouts and they begin to control what news people are hearing. Are you with me? Yeah. Because they know that people's lives and reactions and responses are determined by what they are what hearing. So the Bible teaches that watch this, huh? Life comes through what is heard, death comes through what is what heard. It is easy to walk, if I come to your home, come to your environment, if I check your phone, if I check the music you listen to, if I, if I check, if I'm with you for 24 hours, I can tell in what direction your life will be going. Do you know that? It's not rocket science. Because by the dominant voices that are speaking into your life, they will determine the direction in which you're going. Have you noticed that when you're driving and you're sat now, huh? when you have decided where you want to go or where you think you know where you're going and the sat nav is still on, after where it becomes annoying, you decide to turn it off, isn't it? Yeah. Because either I don't want to go there or I already know where I'm going. So I don't want to hear that voice <laughs> anymore. Okay. <laughs> you know, many times, when God is speaking, when we have decided what we want to do, we switch off that voice. We switch off the voice of people who are trying to speak life to us. Because you know what? Eh? I have decided what I want to do. So Ahab said, put him in prison. Let him talk to the walls inside there when I come back. And I want to say to us, Church of God, right? everybody you listen to, Okay, you must always listen to what is the voice speaking through their voice. The human voice is simply, watch this. The human voice. So, what is this microphone? It is an amplifier of my voice. 
There is no voice in this. But let me tell you what, what it is. Yeah? Hear this. For every action, are you listening? Yeah? There is a voice that is speaking behind it. Okay, let me, let me, let me give you an example. Okay? I just, I'm just, as I'm looking at you, I'm just feeling I want to slap you. Just like that. I'm just, eh? That, I'm just hearing I should just slap you. I, I want your head to scatter ten times over. Ah, what voice is speaking to me? <laughs> Hello? But I, in my mind, I, I, I believe it's God, though. I, 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 one light a lie. I believe it's God that is talking to me. Eh? Am I not a man of God? Hello, is God not speaking to me to slap her? Eh? Pardon? Why, why are, you, are you challenging me? <laughs> Hello, pardon? You, you, you're bearing me witness that is God. Uh, God wants me to reset her uh, uh, eyelashes. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, so why do you believe that it's not God speaking to me? Hello? So God is a God of what? Peace. Yeah? And I, so it's not the Holy Spirit that's leading me. Why not? Because the nature of the Holy Ghost is what? Love. What? Joy. Peace. Patience. Kindness. Goodness. Self-control. Gentleness. Are we together? Yeah? So, you see, it's because you know the character of the Holy Ghost. You also know whether it is His voice speaking. Are you listening? Every voice has a manifestation. So by the choices and decisions a man makes, it can tell you what voice was speaking. I, I'm feeling that the Lord is telling me I should stop going to church. In fact, the Lord says I don't need to read my Bible anymore. I, I know him by the Spirit. Hello? Why are you laughing? That's what I believe that the Lord is telling me. Pardon? Okay. So, in short, I'm lying. Ah! She said that a man of God is lying. Ha! <laughs> ah. I should resign, isn't it? A member of the congregation is telling the pastor that he's lying. Uh, eh? Denise, your first time in church, they're telling the pastor is lying. I'm sure you want to come back to the church where the pastor is lying. Eh? But I feel it's the Lord that's leading me, isn't it? Eh? No, you're sure. Okay. You know, saints of God, yeah. Tommy has just found one guy, who, just to let you guys know. Uh, <laughs> the guy, no, the guy, day. Eh? He's, he's cool. He, she came to speak to me about him. And the Lord, I, and I really believe his Lord is leading her. Okay? Um, he's, he's Hindu, but he's a good guy. Uh, no, wait, wait, hold on. Are you people racist? Huh? No, the guy is a good guy. He's very gentle. He's very kind. And he has Lexus, isn't it? He drives, he drives Ferrari. 
Eh? Yes. Pardon? They are not of equal what? What is that? <laughs> we are not frying egg here. There's no <laughs> yolk. Yolk my food. I beg the guy be. Eh? Did the Lord be with you? Eh? Tofia <laughs> kwa. No, but Church of God. He's a nice guy. He's tall. He's handsome. He has six pack. Eh? If you see his biceps, hey, Jesus. You know the guy is lifting Jesus up. Amen. <laughs> so why, 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 why can't it be God? You know, no, you see, we're laughing here. Eh? Tom is, is one of the worship leaders, respectable worship leaders in, in the house. Even anywhere, any she sings, people, the anointing of God falls upon her. Isn't it? So, how can she be wrong? Hello? Can she be wrong? Why, why can she be wrong? She's a worship leader. Pardon? She's human. So? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The simple reason is this, Church of God, yeah? If you are Christian, if you are, let me say this, this does not apply to those who are not Christians, okay? All right? So, if what I'm about to say doesn't apply to your life, that's okay, because you can't be a believer. But guess what? Huh? After you have heard what I'm about to say now, yeah, you will be held accountable by the words that you hear. I want to say to us, first and foremost, as believers, okay, there's only one constitution for your life. One of the key things that they always say in all democracies, or in, even in countries that are not democracies, okay, except when the military junta come on board. One of the key things that military junta do, you know what junta means? Okay, when there's a coup d'etat in a country, one of the first things that the military always do is that they suspend the constitution. One of the ways that you know you're under demonic affliction, are you listening? Yeah, the number one way that you know whether you're under demonic affliction, you see, where I come from, eh? If I, how many of us can see me? If I begin to do like this on the floor, hmm? like. <laughs> What would they say? They would say what? That there's an evil spirit. Isn't it? That's how we know that evil spirit is walking. Huh? No, it's true. Or if I start spitting out all sorts of things. Okay? But hear this. That is not the, that's not the principal way in which you know whether an evil spirit is already operating somebody's life. Whenever evil spirits come to take over and dominate a person's life. There is always is a coup d'etat of your destiny. The number one thing is the suspension of the word of God. The word of God will no longer make sense to you. You will no longer be ruled by the constitution of heaven. Are you listening? And the constitution of heaven in every civilized country, listen, there is a constitution that determines what is acceptable and unacceptable in that country. So they will say in this country, even in parliament, they want to pass some laws. The first thing they would look at it and say, is it constitutional? And if it is constitutional, it means that, yes, it is in line with the laws and the decrees of this land. Are we together? When you say it is unconstitutional, that is, it is not consistent with our con constitution. Now, the very first thing is this. When the enemy moves into a person's life, the first thing he does is he suspends the word of God in your life. The word of God will no longer mean anything to you. It will no longer govern your choice or your decisions. You now become independent of the word of God. When the word of God is independent, say, eh, I know that's what I say, but you know what? At least I know what I want to do. Or the next thing is to discredit the word of God and for you to say, is it not written by, the, by men?
And you need to ask yourself right now as a person, what is the sovereign constitution of your life? Is it God's word? Or is it your mind? Or are you doing your own thing? Everywhere God's word is suspended. Do you know what happens? Satan takes dominion. It may not be immediately visible. In the Garden of Eden, hear this, a voice came and began to speak, isn't it? What was the constitution of heaven that God gave to them in the garden? He says, don't what? Touch this one. Eat all this, but don't touch this one. Satan came to what manipulates their mind, what? To suspend the constitution of God and allow them to do what he wanted to do. The moment they did it, what happened? Death kicks in or kicked in. Death is not that person who drop on the ground and die. When I wasn't saved, I used to think that if I sin, I would not want to go outside. You know why? I would think that lightning, whenever it's raining, I'll be afraid. That lightning will come out from the sky and just toast me like that, you know? But I later discovered that that's not how it works. You know why? The moment we sin, the law of death kicks in and begins to operate underground before it becomes manifest outside. Now, whether it is by my own decision or by somebody else's, you and I must always, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit has been given to us that we may be able to what? Discern. The Bible says, test what every spirit. First John chapter 4. It says what? First John chapter 4. What? Test what every spirit. And in first John chapter 4, when it says test every spirit, how do you test the spirit that is speaking? It is by what? Checking whether it aligns with what? God's word. Now, if you don't know what is in God's word, then you're a candidate for deception. And one of Satan's strategies to make sure that what this, you don't have enough time, you're too tired, you're too busy to spend time in God's word. Because the Bible tells us in Psalm 105, it says what? That watch this, okay? It says that what? The word is a lamp onto my feet and a light onto my path. Watch this, Psalm 17 and verse 4. Psalm 17 verse 4. It says, by the word of your mouth, I avoided what the path of the destroyer. Watch, let's read it together. Look at it. It says what? Concerning the works of men, by the word of your lips, I have avoided the violent, the ways of the what? Violent, which is the paths of the what? Destroyer. So, the word of God will Knows, God knows where the destroyer is waiting for your life and my life. So when you follow the word of God, the word of God will say, here, this is the way, what? Walk in it. Isaiah chapter what? Is it? Jeremiah? What does it say? Isaiah 30 verse what? 21. Okay? It says what? You will hear a voice saying to you, this is the way walking. So the Holy Ghost will tell you, there's destroyer there. Go this way. If I keep going this way, the Holy Ghost will say, hey, hey. Pause, trigger, turn, move right. Because there's destroyer there. Move this way. You want to make a decision. Your mind is going, that is all right. The Holy Ghost will say, don't choose that one. In the next 10 years, that thing you choose will destroy you. So leave it. And guess what? But Lord, this looks nice. This looks fine and everything. Everything, as far as I'm, all the calculations are right. God said, leave it. It will work for you for 10 years. In the 10th year, it will turn to a serpent and destroy you. And you have a choice to make. Either to go by what you're seeing or to go by what God says. But the Bible says the just shall live by what? Faith and not by what? Sight. And I'm saying to you, church of God, in these last days, okay, the destiny of men will be determined by the voice you're listening to. Let me be honest with you. Let me tell you, I have respect for whiz kids. Do you know that? Um, was the, Ade Kunle, what's the other guy's name? Ade Kunle Gold. Ah, those guys, they can sing. Do you know, you know it's true. 
Yeah. Let me tell you, I even have respect for Beyonce. No, it's true. You're shocked, I'm telling you. No. no. They're gifted. They're talented. Eh? What was, is it Bonner Boy? Eh? Ah, no, no. Yeah? Praise God for them. You know? Because, let me tell you, what they're displaying is, is from God that they have their talent. Don't shoot them down and say no. They're not. It's God. The devil didn't create anything. The devil is not a giver of anything. The devil is a taker, never a giver. So whatever gift you see operating is from God. Okay? But because they don't know God, they're misusing the gift of God for which they will stand before God and give an account. Am I making sense? Okay? But the reason I mention these guys because thank God for them. But their voice by the grace of God, does not control my decisions, my choices, and my, and my life movement. Am I making sense? So, I have no business going to watch them. I have no business going to listen carefully so I can master all their things. Because the truth is, if I follow what they're saying, ah, I can't be your pastor anymore. And if you carry their words into your relationship, you will scatter your life. Am I making sense? Because they're using, they're misappropriating the gift of God upon their lives. Are we together? Yeah? So which voice must control my destiny? The voice that must control your destiny must, number one, must originate from the word of God. Every voice that comes into your life through whoever, even through your wife, even through your husband, even through your children, whoever it is, you must always do a double check. Test, isn't it? Test it. Is this in line with God's word? Because if it is not in line with God's word, sorry, Jesus Christ said to Peter, who loved him very carefully, who said, what? get thee what behind me, Satan. Why? Because what you're saying is not consistent with what God is saying. But please, wife, don't tell your husband, get thee behind me, Satan. Eh? Because if you say that, you receive fivefold ministry. And you know what? No prayer can help you there. Am I making sense? When he, when he says it, or if she says it, say it in your heart. Don't say it out. You don't say, Pastor said we should tell you. God, get thee behind me, Satan. Then you now cause trouble in your home. Am I making sense? Yeah. Sit in your heart and say, Honey, I hear what you're saying, but darling, please, can you just show me so we can follow God with this, your advice? Can you show me through the Bible where, where it is? You say, yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry. I'm just saying. Then you don't know where that's coming from. Am I making sense? Yeah. Now, when you check every voice of God, hear this will always lead you to righteousness. The voice of God will never lead you to do what is unrighteous. Number two, the voice of God will always lead you to a place where you are, watch this, to a place where it will draw you closer to God, not further away from God. So the Holy Spirit cannot lead me in a direction that is causing me to lose my relationship and intimacy with God. Are you with me? Yeah? The, watch this, the voice of God will always, will always hear this, cause me to put self down and to exalt God and others. Anywhere where you see selfishness, self-interest, I guarantee is not of God. The, the, when Jesus Christ said to Peter, Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Hear this. He said, because your, what I'm hearing is focused on selfish interest and not on the glory of God. God will never lead you to where you are the only one who will be blessed. The, 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 the voice of God will always lead you to where you'll be a blessing to others. F fourthly, the voice of God, hear this, okay, will never lead you into sin.
The voice of God will never lead you into sin. When you and I sin, it is our own decision. The Bible says in James, hear this, when any man is tested, let him not say, it is God. Why? Because God will never lead you into sin. Let me close with this. Let me run through this. Can you put that script on, on for me, please? And, and I'll close with this. What I sent out, the text. Sadami. Are we together? God's word must always occupy where? Let's read together. Must always occupy the where? The chief and principal place in all our what? Thoughts, words, and deeds. The precepts, the principles, and patterns of scripture, the Holy Spirit, and the history of God's actions over time must inform our conclusions of God's voice. Never what? respect nor give greater honor to the speaker than the words that proceed from their mouth next line it says what a man's what title eloquence gifting socioeconomic status or history does not and must never carry more weight than the scriptures Finally, it says what? Everything must be scrutinized and sifted through the word of God. The word of God must be the final what? Arbiter. What does arbiter mean? Arbitrator, referee, decider, judge. Okay? And what? Immigration what? Officer. Okay? Of what is what? Acceptable in our hearts and minds even if an angel is the what conveyor of the message galatians 1 it says what even if an angel comes to tom and tell you something that's contrary to the word of god which means that i had a dream ah in that the angel of my father's father came and spoke to me that's why i know it's god but check this is it in line with god's word no that means that that angel was a devil isn't it Corinthians tells us that, the, that even Satan masquerades as a what? An angel of light to come and deceive men. Finally, it says what? Even if God is doing a new thing, are we together? Yeah? Ah, this is a new thing that God is doing. Watch this. He will never do anything that violates his what? His good old book, which is the word of God. That means that, um, mommy, you are, you know, where this is a new wave. This is a new move of God. It's a new direction, new expression of God. You know, uh, God is moving in a fresh way now. But guess what? Jesus Christ is the same when? Yesterday, today, and forever. Whenever God does even something new, it is never contrary to the old word. Are we together? Okay. The Bible says he's the same yesterday today and what forever it says don't be what deceived god is not what mocked heaven and earth will pass away but not a teeter of god's word will pass away every single line there is a scripture and i'm saying this because church of god you know what please i'm begging you in these day in this day and age there are lots of things that are all over the place that just seems really cool, seem fantastic, seem wonderful. And if you don't know what God's constitution says, you will fall into devilish error. And guess what? By the time you wake up, you may discover it is too late. I pray that God's counsel the Bible says, oh, how I love thy law, thy word. They are my what? Counselors. Psalm 109. Uh, Psalm 119. 
Oh, how I love thy law. Thy words, they are my what? Counselors. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit is a wonderful what? Counselor. Jesus is also known as our wonderful counselor. Prince of what? Peace. You know, so when God is truly speaking and is my counselor, hallelujah. You know what? There is a peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Because whenever God's word guides your life, his peace will surround your heart. Because the way of God will never lead to error, will never lead to sin, whether long term or short term. Satan is the master of short term profit and long time loss. Let me repeat, short term profit and long time loss. That is Satan. But in God, you may have a short term loss. But the long term will be joy, peace. Because the kingdom of God is of what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's always the outcome of all voices that are of God in your life. It will produce righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Let us rise up together. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Uh, it's quiet. You can come now. You can finish it off for me. Donna McCoughlin did this song several years ago, you know. And it's called Speak to My Heart. Do you know that if you have really been here today, uh, listen, you have just been in the midst of deliverance. Are you with me? Some of us think that deliverance is, oh, it can't want it to hit me. And then I just swerved and then God just delivered me. Let me tell you, truth is the number one deliverance you can have in your life. And deliverance of God is not when you are in and he's bringing you out. It is that before you get there, God will deliver you in advance. Ah, I hope that we understand this truth. Because many of us will realize that if I had heard God, I would not be where I am today. If I had heard God with clarity, I would not be in recovery mode right now. If I had heard God when I should have heard him, I should have been much further in life than I am today. But I want to say to you that if you've heard this voice today, hallelujah, God in his mercy will bring restoration into your life. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There is a restoration that God does. When men hear God and say, God, I have heard you and I receive your word. I believe your word, oh God. Guide me by your truth. Order my steps in your word, oh God. Lord, even that I will become, Lord God, one that would help others. You have children today. You have them around you. Even if there have been errors in your life, you can help the young ones around you and speak the word of life into their life. Father, this is our cry today. Guide me. Direct me. Order my steps, O oh God. Let your word, O oh God, be a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, O oh God. Let your word be the governor of my mind. Let your word be the arbiter, the judge, the immigration officer of my choices. Direct my choices in line with your word. Let your spirit have free reign. Lord, this morning we surrender and submit so you would have your way. Lead me, guide me. Lord, we let go so that you can lead us. Lord, every thought in my mind that is contrary to yours, every decision that is inconsistent with your word, I lay it down this day. Every reasoning that is contrary to your plain truth, Lord, deliver me from it. 
Lord, you said Satan comes to build fortresses in our minds. Lord, every fortress of a lie, every fortress of untruth, every fortress of deception, that the enemy, even if it's a foothold, even if it is a seed, Lord, remove it from my mind. The Bible says that he has called us to tear down, pull down, uproot and destroy. Lord, every lie, every deception, every strategy of the enemy to, to, to sow seeds of lies in our mind that would corrupt our path and our destiny. Father, in the name of Jesus, set us free. Yes, set us free. Amen. Deliver us this day, O oh God. Yes. Lord, every mind I read in the papers that the Russians, as they were leaving, they're putting mines all over the place so that even after they've left, death will still be operating after them. And the purpose of a mine is that you will not see it. They call them IUDs, you know. And, and so you, you think everything is all right. You go to lift a bag, boom, and something blows up in you. You're going to ask God, Lord, every mine that the enemy has laid in places I cannot see, in situations I cannot understand, I cannot discern, Lord, I ask you in your mercy, may I not walk in those places. The Bible says, because of the word of the Lord, he has delivered me from the path of the destroyer. Lord, every mind that the enemy has put in the way, Lord God, to cause me, oh God, to misstep or to make wrong choices and decisions. Lord, I want to honor you with my heart. I want to honor you with my life. I want my home to honor you. I want to live the life you have called me to. I want to walk before you in truth, in righteousness. I want to walk before you in the light. Father, this is our prayer. This is our cry. Holy Spirit, guide us, direct us, order our steps in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. A practical thing I want you to do on your phones, get the audio Bible, put it on in your homes have the bible playing have the word of god have, have have worship music fill your atmosphere with the right voice you can never rise or go further than the voice that is directing you so you saturate your environment as you're driving as you're on the underground as you're traveling on the buses, allow the word of God to do the plane. You'll be amazed at how much the word of God can filter into your spirit and order your steps. God can never order your steps beyond his word. Father, this is our prayer. We'll bless you, we'll honor you, and we'll give you all the glory, all the praise in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor it is well with you. May the Lord bless you, keep you, and uphold you. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening to this message. We hope that it has been a blessing to you. For counseling, prayers, or to fellowship with us, visit us at RCCG ICC, rear of 31 to 35 High Road, behind Nat West Bank, Romford, Essex, RM6, 6QJ, United Kingdom.